Hello everyone, it's Indradeep Kumar, Assistant Professor, IAI, Hyderabad. Earlier we had seen some numericals from the first module. Now today we will see numerical on size and surface factor. So in this numerical we will see how size factor and surface factor will affect the manufacturing or any you can see the behavior of the same beam. So first question is a simple well supported beam or you can say simply supported beam has a concentrated load at the center which fluctuates from a value of p to 4 means here range is given like from p to 4p it can vary the span of the beam is 500 mm and its cross section is circular with a diameter of 60 mm so here a span is given and cross section is given Taking for the beam material an ultimate stress of 700 megapascal, a yield stress that is ultimate stress is given as 700 megapascal, a yield stress of 500 megapascal, endurance limit of 330 megapascal that is sigma E is given for reversed bending. So here just see the word is reverse bending in this case, right? So here you have to take care of this word for reverse bending and a factor of safety of 1.3. Factor of safety is given as 1.3. Calculate the maximum value of P. So here maximum value of P, just see here in the question first, put it properly, P and 4P. Means P to 4P can vary, but in that what we can take the value of P. So let's, we are getting the value of P, that maximum is suppose 40, right? So we cannot use P1 as 40, that P is as 41, 39 is possible, right? Up to 40 we can take, but not as 41 because if 41 we will take then range will be 41 to 41 into 4 because 4p is given right so that is 164 so 41 to 164 range becomes but no we cannot use this one maximum is that we have to find the maximum p so this maximum p will be 40 right and then range will be 40 to 160 so that is the here maximum so don't get confused with the First range is given and then they are asking maximum. So maximum will be 4p. No, that p value we have to find which can be of 4 times from here. Right? And then they given what size factor as 0 0.85 and a surface finish factor that is surface factor as 0 0.9. So we have to use these data to solve the numerical and find the value of p. Right? Okay. So here the maximum value is required means what we will find two in two ways like by Goodman's method and by Sudarwag method. Which one will be the maximum that P we can say this is the maximum value of P. Maximum is what? what up to that only we can take whatever the lower value will be there. That is really can be handled. So we will see that means whatever the maximum value from those two method we will get that maximum one will be the answer of this question. So let's see. First it's a given. Okay. So now in terms of what, just see here, so what concentrated load is given, right? So load is there, but what we are finding Goodman fact, this one Goodman relation and so the word in terms of stress. So first from the load, we have to find the stress. So how we will find, so just see first given is W minimum, that is P, W maximum is given as 4P, length that is span is given as 500 mm, diameter is given as 60 mm, right? Sigma U ultimate 700 megapascal that converting into Newton per mm square. Why? Because everything should be in same unit. So here our length is in millimeter, diameter is in millimeter. So that also converted in terms of millimeter instead of megapascal is what? Newton mega Newton per meter square. So here this is given in per meter square and we required in mm. So converted to Newton per mm square. Similarly, sigma y, 500 megapascal is given, so that will give you 500 Newton per mm square. Sigma e, 330 megapascal, so 330 Newton per mm square. Factor of safety, that Fs is given as 1.3. Concentration factor of size, size concentration factor, that Sz denotes here the size, that is given as 0 0.85. And Su are represent here surface, okay, surface is given as 0 0.9. So this is the given data. Now we have to use this data to solve and find the maximum value of P. So first, let's see. What? First we will find the maximum bending moment. So bending moment and maximum will be what? W max into L y 4. W max is how much given? It's 
See in the question, it's a 4p. So substitute here, 4p. Alice, 500, so 500 divided by 4. After finding this, 4, 4 will get cancelled. You will get what? 500p. So m max will be 500p. Similarly, m mean we have to find that minimum bending moment will be what? W mean into L by 4. Again, W mean is P. So P into 500 by 4. That will give you after cancelling with this 125 P Newton meter. So now we have maximum bending moment, minimum bending moment. Now what do we require? Minimum, sorry, mean or average bending moment. Mean is what? Sum of those two divided by 2. So mean bending moment that is M subscript small m is what m maximum that is maximum bending moment plus minimum bending moment divided by 2 maximum bending moment how much you got 500 p minimum bending moment is 125 p just add both divided by 2 so after adding what you will get this is mean bending moment that is 312.5 p newton uh, per newton mm is your what mean bending moment now mean we have next is required variable bending moment variable bending moment means what same just whatever here formula is there right that will be subtracted so m variable v stands for variable here m variable will be m max minus m mean by 2 m max is how much 500 p right m mean already we found 125 p divided by 2 after calculating this we will get that as 187.5 p newton Right. So now we have what bending moment. But what we required in terms of a stress. So for that first we need the section modulus. This already we had seen in other space section modulus of a beam is pi by 32 d q. Right. So d is given. So pi by 32 d is 60. It's a given in the question. So 60 q. After finding this, what we are getting that 21.21 into 10 to the power 3. That is you can say 21210 mm cube or in terms of power cube so 21.21 into 10 to the power 3 meter cube so this is our section modulus now what we have we have maximum bending moment minimum bending moment then we found average bending moment then variable bending moment and section modulus now from this we will find the stress, right? So for mean bending stress, what is that? Sigma m equals to maximum bending moment, sorry, mean bending moment by z. Mean bending moment, how much we got? 312.5 p. Z, how much we got? 21.21 .21 into 10 to the power 3. After solving this one, how much you will get? Sigma m equals to 0 0.0147 p newton per mm square so now just see what we have sigma m so for finding sigma m what we found first from the load we found that maximum bending moment minimum bending moment then average bending moment or mean bending moment and then next variable bending moment now we have and section modulus now once we have the minimum bending moment maximum bending moment with that that means mean bending moment and variable bending moment from that we will find the mean bending stress and variable bending stress. So similarly, variable bending moment stress will be sigma b, sigma v equals to mv by z. mv how much we got? 187.5 p divided by 21.21 into 10 to the power 3. So this will give you 0 0.0008 p newton per m square. So now we have sigma m sigma v now come to the what goodman formula so what is goodman formula here in terms of safety factor surface factor and size factor so one by factor of safety is sigma mean by sigma ultimate plus sigma variable into kf divided by sigma e into sigma surface sorry k surface plus k size here concentration factor is not given so that's why we just consider as concentration factor as 1 right now put the value sigma m how much we got sigma mean as 0 0.0147 p so 0 0.0147 p okay then next sigma u already given in the question that is 700 right next because the see here the same unit is a newton per mm square so we are just putting the values 
right next sigma v we got 0.0088 p newton per angular square so 0.0088 p kf 1 sigma e given in the question 330 that endurance stress right then surface factor is given as 0 0.9 then it's given as 0 0.85 now after solving we can solve this one so let's see once you will solve this term 0 0.0147 by 700 you will get 21 by 10 to the power 6 how you can just see all 0 0.0147 p divided by i'm solving for this term first divided by 700 so for removing this decimal here how many 1 2 3 4 4 0 will be there so 10 to the power 4 now what do we have we can write this here so 147 by 7 into 10 to the power 6 this term so this 2 0 and 10 4 0 so 10 to the power 6 divided by 7 7 21 though. 147 so we have what 21 p by 10 to the power 6 similarly if you will solve this one right then you will get 34.8 power 10 by 6 so now from here we have 21 p by 10 to the power 6 plus 34.8 p by 10 to the power 6 we take 10 to the 1 by 10 to the power 6 common right what do you have 21 p okay 21 p plus 34.8 p so these two we can add after adding what we will get 55.8 p divided by 10 to the power 6 so this is what this equals to 1 by 1.3 this one 1 by f so this we can write here as 1 by 1.3 okay now what we have to find we have to find p so what we will do cross multiplication so from here what we will get this cross multiply like this so 10 to the power 6 equals to how much 5 5 that is 55.8 p into 1.3 so that that imply p will be what 10 to the power 6 divided by 55.8 into 1.3 after solving this what we will get that p equals to how much 1 3 7 8 5 newton and in terms of kilo newton it will be 13.785 or that also you can write as 13 point seven eight five into ten to the power three newton like same what we used here where in terms of this representing in decimals okay so ten to the power three like here we have taken the ten to the power three here like this one so in the same way we can write this as thirteen point seven eight five into ten to the power three newton or thirteen point seven eight five kilo newton so that is not important in which unit you are representing but that unit should be newton you can represent in newton also in kilonewton also or in the same newton but in terms of power okay so this we got from the goodman right this is not the final because goodman and sudal what we are seeing the similarity is there the relationship right so we have to verify this that means we have to find by using sudalberg also and then we will compare which one is maximum or which one is greater that value will be the maximum value of p okay so now according to Suderberg formula similarly the Suderberg difference between Suderberg and that was what here there that is sigma u and in case of Suderberg it's a sigma y that is yield stress this is ultimate and that is for yield remaining everything will be same so 1 by fs equals to sigma m by sigma y plus sigma b into kf divided by sigma e k surface into k size right now let's see the similarity everything is same here right only this term is different right so in the question what we will do first like finding in previous itself or here find this value separately right so that we can use for both so means this is the final value after substituting the values so this will remain same for both the equation no need to change so just like you just see here this we got this is the final 
answer of this value in terms of p. So this we can write. So just write the formula, substitute the value, and then no need to multiply and all. Directly you can use this one. Only this you have to find why because here ultimate is different, and in that formula that means in Sudarman formula we are using the yield stress. So now let's start again. So one by factor of safety is so one by one point three sigma m. We found that is mean stress. That sigma mean. So zero point zero one four seven p divided by five hundred. That is yield stress is given. Sorry. Okay. Plus seeing this value sigma v zero point zero zero eight eight p into surface factor. Sorry. K f concentration factor as one sigma e given three thirty k surface zero point nine. 0.085. So again, so this will be same. Just see directly this one. Now this will be what? So 0.0147 p divided by 500. So again, for removing this decimal here, how many? One, two, three, four. Four will be there. So the power zero. So this we can write as ten to the power six. So one forty-seven by five into ten to the power six p. After dividing this. What do you will get? Twenty nine point four. So finally, we have twenty nine point four p divided by ten to the power six. So here, twenty nine point four p divided by six. Now we have this one again. Just take what ten to the power six common because denominator is same. So we can take ten denominator or just if denominator is same, simply we can add. So after adding twenty nine point four and Thirty-four point eight p. What we will get? Sixty-four point two p divided by ten to the power six. Right. Same. So what is that? One by one by one point three equals to what we got? Sixty-four point two p divided by ten to the power six. Again, just cross multiply. Right. To get the p. So one ten to the power six equals to sixty-four point two p into one point. Three, so p is equals to ten to the power six divided by sixty four point two into one point three, right? So after cancelling, you will get value of p as thirty one three seven eight five. Sorry, this one not here. One after finding this, you will get one one nine eight two newton. That also can be written as one one nine. Sorry, one. 1.982 kilo newton. So this in terms of kilo newton. Now just match with the answer. Here we are getting 11.982 kilo newton, or almost you can say 12 kilo newton. But according to Goodman, what we got 13.785. So this value is the maximum value we can take, and that's why in the question itself it was there. Now find the maximum value of p. So here we are getting greater value. So this value will be the Maximum value of p, which can satisfy or which we can use in the Goodman and Sudarwar equation for the given surface factor, size factor, and all others data. So after this, so from the above, we find that maximum value of p is thirteen point seven eight five kilo newton. Clear? So final answer will be thirteen point seven eight five newton. So just see if suppose this question will be in exam, then don't forget to write this line. Because this line, because this line is very important. This only is required to find. It's not like that separately you found from the good man also and so that also and just you leave it. No, because they ask clearly that find the maximum value. So you have to mention the maximum value. If suppose they ask find the forces, right? Or find the value of p, then no need to go for both. You can take any one. But when it's a maximum, then maximum value they leave. If suppose they will ask the minimum one, then This will be the minimum value. So wording is very important that what actually is required in that question, and according to that you have to write it. Not like that. Simply you solve, and that answer will be there, and you will get the full marks. No, whatever the wording is given in the question, according to that you have to write the final conclusion of the answer. Whatever you are taking, that which one will be the maximum, which one will be the minimum. So just see once again, just put it all quickly. So what is given? W given. So W is that is load is given in terms of what? That W just we assume that W equals to P. That load is given. So first we found 
maximum bending moment, minimum bending moment. From that, we found what? Mean bending moment or average bending moment and then variable bending moment. Now we have mean bending moment, variable bending moment. Then find section modulus. For section modulus, data is given, diameter is given. Now once we have maximum bend, mean bending moment, variable bending moment and section modulus, then we can find sigma mean, that is mm, that is mean bending moment divided by section modulus, we will get the sigma mean value. Similarly, for variable mv by z, that is variable bending moment divided by section modulus, we will get sigma v. Now, here, so for this, up to this, everywhere it's the same. Then no need to change, like whatever is given in terms of that, finally, you have to find sigma m and sigma v. If suppose in question directly they given sigma m, sigma v, then, then these steps are not required. So first you see what is given in the question because according to Suderberg and Goodman, we required in terms of sigma only, sigma mean, sigma ultimate, sigma yield, whatever in terms of sigma. So if directly it's given, then it's fine. Otherwise, just see how we can find with the given data, those sigma m, sigma u and all, right? Once you will find the stress related to all, whatever is given or whatever is required for the Goodman and Suderberg. Now, just use the Goodman formula Suitable formula, substitute the value, simplify, you will get the answer. So your first target should be first write given data like this. After writing that, see with the given data how you can find the stress. Once you have all the stresses, like mean stresses, variable stresses, ultimate, endurance, whatever, just substitute in the given, that is Goodman and Suitable formula. Clear? Yeah. So after this, section modulus. So, after that, find sigma m, that is mm by z, which is what? That mean bending moment by section modulus, similarly sigma b, variable bending moment by z. After finding sigma m, sigma b, just write the Goodman formula. Just see, writing Goodman formula is very important because what value you are substituting that should be known. And it will be easier for you also to write that answer properly. So just see, whatever the order is, if sigma v into kf is there, so first write sigma v value, right? Then kf value. Similarly here, sigma e into k surface into k size, so first write sigma e value, then k surface, then k size. It's not like that because it's uh, if you will write in another order, like you written formula like this, and here you are writing 0 0.9 into 330 into 0 0.5, that goes wrong. No, because it's a multiplication, either you multiply a into b or b into a, algebraically it's a correct. But the order, if you will write in the same order, then it will be easier. Suppose if mistake is there, then you can identify, okay, which value I missed, right? So then easily you can identify and examiner also identify, okay, this value is for this one. And then it's easy to evaluate also and for you to find your mistake also if you are not getting the proper answer. So whatever the way you are writing formula, in the same way, the same order, just substitute the value of that particular identity also. Okay, so after finding from the Goodman P, you will get this one. Now the same sigma y is given. Now use ultimate, that means pseudo formula with pseudo formula, find again P. Now you have two values. Which one will be the maximum? Just that will be the, the final answer. If suppose in the question they ask the minimum value, then whatever the minimum value you are getting, that will be the answer. Correct? Okay. Now see the next question. It's just similar, but that was for simply supported. Now here we will see for the cantilever. Okay. So question is a cantilever beam, right? Made up of made of cold drawn carbon steel of circular cross section as shown in figure. So here it's a given, right? Here one extra thing is there that we will discuss once you just see the question first. Okay. Is subjected to a load which varies from minus F to 3F. Just see in previous question it was given P to 4P. So here this time minus F to 3F. Determine the maximum load. That again same. Determine the maximum value of P. So you determine the maximum value of F. Okay. That this member can withstand for an indefinite life using a factor of 52 for indefinite light. That means what maximum load we can apply so that oh, that this structure will have infinite life, right? The theoretical stress concentration factor is 1.42. Next, and the notch sensitivity, just here, this one is 
one extra word is here that notch sensitivity just see here this is the notch here so at this point notch sensitivity is 0.9 this also we have to consider assume the following values so what is given ultimate stress is given that is sigma u given yield stress sigma y is given endurance limit that is sigma e is given size factor so k size is given surface finish factor that is k surfaces so these values are given what we required sigma m sigma v that is missing from the formula so again by using this we will find sigma m and sigma v once we will have sigma m sigma v by using this formula we will put directly and we will get the answer again we have to find for both that by using Woodland as well as Suderberg to identify which one is the maximum and that maximum will be the answer okay so the same so these are the given data again same converted mega pascal into newton per mm square so these are the given value now just see here one extra thing is notch sensitivity which is denoted by q right for this in terms of finding the k factor we will use this one because then the ckf is not given right so we will find just see okay this we will see later so the same the beam as shown in figure is subjected to a reverse bending load in the previous question also it was given that reverse bending load only since the point a at the change of cross section is critical just see here only the cross section is changing here cross section is 20 now after this it's a 13 so this is the notch point and from here onwards the diameter is 13 right Therefore, we shall find bending moment at point A. So, once we have the bending moment at point A, after that, through all, that is still here, it will be same only. Right? So, first we have to find bending moment at A, that means at the critical point. Okay? So, now, we know that maximum bending moment at A will be what? The M max, that is maximum bending moment, equals to W max into 125. Now, what is 125? See the figure. What is given as 125? Here, this length. Right? So, from here to here is 125. So, before we are finding for A, because of this, up to this only we have to find what up to this, that 150. Okay? So, load into distance, because we are finding at A. So, distance up to A from the the starting that is all from the free end from the free end to till a is 125 meter so we will use that 125 and w max is what so just see 3f is w max and 125 is that that distance so load into distance will give you the moment that is m max 375 f newton mm right now mean again say mean minimum bending at point a so w minimum into distance will be same again because point is not changing at the same point we are finding so distance again remains same what is w mean w mean is minus f so minus f into 125 will give you minus 125 f newton mm right now we have to find what now we found the maximum bending moment minimum bending moment now from that we will find mean bending moment and variable bending moment. So mean bending moment will be what? Sum of maximum bending moment plus minimum bending moment divided by 2. So after putting the value maximum bending moment, how much we got? 375. Minimum bending moment is minus 125. So plus of minus 125, you have to take care proper sign because that's why it's given in the question as minus 125. This is acting in opposite direction. So after subtracting, what you will get? 375 plus and minus become minus. So 375 f minus 125 f that will give you 250 250 f divided by 2 will give you 125 m. so this is the mean what mean bending moment now what we will find we will find the variable bending moment so variable bending moment formula already in your, you know that maximum bending moment minus minimum bending moment by 2 so maximum bending moment is 375 f minus of minus and minus minus 125 so minus of minus becomes plus so after adding 375 plus 125 that becomes 500 500 divided by 2 will give you 250 
F Newton m r. Now we have that average bending moment and variable bending moment. What is the next step? Find the section modulus. So section modulus formula again z equals to pi by 32 into b cube. So pi by 32 b is given in the question as 13. Let's just see here diagram. That is not given in the from the diagram only. This is 13. From here that's why arrow is here. So this is 13. Diameter of this part is from here to here is 13. Right? So we will use that one. Okay. So after putting the value, what we are getting? Z equals to 215.7 mm cube. Now find what is stress. So once we have the bending moment, that average bending moment, variable bending moment, section modulus, we will find sigma m and sigma v. That is mean bending stress and average bending stress. So mean bending stress will be what? mm that is average bending moment divided by z. So average bending moment how much we got? 125 f divided by section modulus is 215.7. So after finding this, what we will get? 0 0.58 f newton per mm square. So this we got as sigma m. Next variable stress is what? Sigma v is mv by z. So mv is how much? 250 that we got here by 1215.7. So 250 f by 215.7. After finding this, what you will get? 1.16 f newton per mm square. So just see here, once the force is negative, right, that minimum force, what we are getting here in this case, just see, maximum, that average bending moment, we are getting lesser compared to the yield bending moment. But in previous question, what we got? That mean bending moment was greater than the variable bending moment. So same here again, sigma m will be smaller than the sigma v. So just see we got sigma m is 0.58, sigma v is 1.16. So now we have sigma m, sigma v. But what about q? q is given, so not sensitivity also we have to take. So from there we will find the stress concentration factor. Right? So now here it's formula for finding kf in terms of q is kf equals to 1 plus q into k tau, that is CL concentration factor, that is given in the question, just see here, that here, right, that is 1.42, here it's the critical stress concentration factor is 1.42, so that k t is critical concentration factor, Zero, that q is mass factor, so after once you will put, so 1 is 1, q is 0 0.9, critical concentration factor is 1.42, minus 1. So after solving this, you will get 1.378. Now you have the Kf value. This is equals to Kf. Now everything you have, what is required for that formula, now the thing is just you have to substitute the value and get the answer. So let's say. Now, 1 by from the first similarly again from the good man and so that one, you have to find and see which one is the maximum, that will be the answer. So from the Goodman formula, what is that? 1 by fs equals to sigma m by sigma u plus sigma v into kf divided by sigma e into k surface into k size. Now k is not required here because already for finding kf we used that q value, that is notch value. Right? So now factor of safety is given to sigma m we found 0.58f, sigma u given as 550, sigma v we found 1.16f. Kf we found 1.378, sigma e given 275, k surface given 0 0.89, k size given 0 0.85. Just after substituting again simplify or again for this value you can find separately, this you can find separately. Why? Because this is this will be same for the next that is suitable work from now also. So after solving this, what will you get? 0 0.00105f. And after solving this part, what have we got? 0.00768f. So after adding these two, what we got? 0.00873f. So now we have f. So from this is equals to what? This 1 by 2. Right. So f will be what? This 1 by 2 into this one. So f equals to 1 by 2 into 0.00873. After if 1 by this value will give you 57.3 ton. So now we have force by Goodman formula. Now next what we will do by 
that is Soderbergh formula will apply. So Soderbergh formula only what? This will be sigma y will be different. Remaining everything will be same. So now 1 by fs equals to sigma m by sigma y plus sigma v into kf divided by sigma e into k surface into k size. Just substitute all the value whatever you have. So this part already you have. So substitute the value. So sigma m is 0 0.58 and sigma y is 470 right that is given sigma v we found kf we found that same similarly like previous for this part substitute here right this value will be same for all the parts only the sigma u and sigma y will be different in case of Soderberg and Goodman formula so after substituting the value this right so 0 0.58 by f for 0 0.58 f by 470 will give you what 0.00123f and this value is already we have 0.00768 after adding these two what we will get 0.00891f so similarly f will be what 1 by 2 into 0.00891 so once you will divide 1 by this value you will get 56 newton so now just see which one is greater so here this value is greater from the good man this value is Lisa. Right? So now just see the conclusion. In previous question also, we got the Goodman form that Goodman value of f is greater than the Sudarbhan formula. Now we just compare the y that is reason. So here we use the ultimate one. See the difference. Here we used in that means in Goodman, we are using the ultimate stress, but in case of this, we are using the yield stress. So you can see that always for any material, the plastic material, ultimate stress is greater than the yield stress. So that's why we are getting that when we will use in terms of ultimate stress means what? That is plastic body that having the plastic limit. Yield just like glass. Glass can break easily. So definitely for the glass material less force is required and for the metal type greater force is required. So that's why here you can say this is just for metal or glass this one iron type or any particular metal right and this is just like glass type of which cannot obey or this is for non-plastic material so that's why always we are you can see even though loads are negative then also same we got Goodman formula that for greater force we got the Goodman formula and for from this one so we got the lesser value of f it's not like that you now you know that okay from the Goodman only we will get the greater formula so directly write the value well, no first we have to so how much you got from the Goodman and how much you got from the Superbird formula and then only you can conclude why which one will be the greater because without finding or without showing the Superbird value you cannot directly conclude that the okay Goodman will be the maximum load or anything. Now in the same case we had seen already in previous video you can see we found the diameter of that one. So similar way they can give here because already it's a given diameter right so that's why we found the section modulus from this step right. So now instead of that everything will, they will give like pseudomath or uh, this one. What do you can say? Maximum force will be this one. Means maximum force once you have then no need to go for this formula. Just go for this formula and here this term will change. What? Sigma m. Sigma m will be what? m m by z. So here you have to keep in terms of m m by z. Okay. This will be again sigma v will be in terms of m v by z. From z you have to just put pi by 32 dq and remaining value you will have that time you will have the value of f you can find sigma e sigma v and just substitute in the value you will get the diameter that again after simplifying you will get the value of d so just that's why i in the starting itself it will first write the given value and after that see what you have to find so once you know that what is required then analyze just see because these all the formula what we are seeing is related to somewhat so then that was Goodman and Sudarbar only. So once you know everything, then only just compare what to find. Right. And then by using that formula, you can just simplify, use your calculator, or if you if you wish, you can just power simplify and then put into the calculator so that chances are very less for getting wrong, and then find that value. So just once you have all the values, so just see here. Like similarly, everything is written here, whatever the given, and then right here, right what is required suppose here what we require that force is required so f equals to what so 
I claim maximum word use because maximum word is required. So here f max is equals to what? So where you are writing the given data, write everything whatever is given and then write f max equals to what? Right? Now for f max, you have to first compare, then you have to find by pseudo verb and Gurman formula. So for before finding x, whatever the other things are required in the Gurman formula, just find that value. So for Gurman formula like sigma m, sigma u is required, sigma e is required, sigma v is required. How you will find the sigma v and all? See the given data and try to find from that data. Once you will have that data, substitute in the value in Gurman or Superbird formula and see which term is missing. And that you can find. So see, in terms of force, if again, just I'm repeating it, in terms of force is given, then first find what maximum bending moment, minimum bending moment. Once you have maximum bending moment, minimum bending moment, then find average bending moment and variable bending moment. Once you have average bending moment and minimum bending, sorry, average bending moment and variable bending moment, from that find sigma and that is average stress and variable stress. Once you have average, and mean just use the Sturberg or Goodman formula to find. Like in this special case, that's why I mentioned this question because notch sensitivity is given. So for finding the KF from the notch sensitivity fact value, you can use this formula. Okay. Once you have all the values, the substitute and what you can simplify so that you will get the answer okay so these are the references this question if you want to refer you can get from here okay so these are the references from where i got these questions right so you can just refer okay this question or this also the same is there so this is just reference for you okay if suppose you have any doubt or anything you can just comment on the video right yeah, or else you can just comment in the video. We will I will post the answer or if it is there, then you will see how the dots is there. So for any doubts or anything, just contact or comment on the video itself. Okay, thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.